Welcome once more, dear candidates, to the DGE Mass Panel. I am Dr. Miles, your host, and we are now looking at questions three and four. Please don't forget to subscribe, to share this video, and to leave your comments so that we know exactly on how to serve you better. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share. You can equally visit our blog www.gcmathpanel.blogspot.com to see videos of past corrections and to see our preparations for GCE for any year. Let's begin. Question three, draw the truth table for each of the propositions. P implies Q and negation of P or Q and show that they are identical. So we are to make two tables. The first table is the table of P implies Q and P implies Q is true whenever both are the same. That is when P is true and Q is true. P implies Q will be true. And even when both are false, it will be true. So it is true when both are the same. It will only be false when the second is false. It will only be false when the first is true and the second is false. All the other cases, it is true or one. So in this case, we have this table. Then now for the negation of P or Q, know that the or logic statement is only false when both are false or it's only zero when both are zeros. So note that on this table, you can use either zero and ones or you can use true and false. But at advanced level, maybe it'd be better for you to use zero and ones. So for negation of P or Q, this is what we have. And here, negation of P, negation of zero is one. That is one or zero will give us one. And negation of zero is one. One or one will give us one. Here, negation of one is zero. Zero or zero will give us zero. And here, negation of one is zero or one will give us one. As I mentioned before, the all statement is only false when both are false in this case. Now, when you look at these two tables, you see that they're actually identical. So whenever you have P implies Q, you can reduce it by using negation of P or Q and vice versa. So we conclude that P implies Q is identical to the negation of P or Q. The B part of the equation reads, given sine inverse of x equals alpha and cos inverse of x equals beta or A and B, show that sine A plus B equals one. Yes, this is one of the equations too that's been tough and a lot of students has been sending me a lot of messages on actually doing this tutorial. We first of all, apologize for doing it late. We have been delayed by many other things, technicians and so on and school work too, you know, we equally have a lot of work in our hands. So here we start by saying that A plus B, I've used alpha and beta, I've used A and B for alpha and beta. So A plus B should be equal to sine inverse of X plus cos inverse of X and sine A plus B therefore be equal to sine of sine inverse of X plus cos inverse of X. So the right, using uh, the right hand side can be simplified as, so we have two angles here, sine inverse of X and cos inverse of X. So you have sine this angle, sine sine inverse of X cos, cos inverse of x plus, now cos, cos sine inverse of x, sine cos inverse of x. But we know that sine, the sine of sine inverse of x is x, and the cos of cos inverse of x is x. So that gives us x times x plus cos of sine inverse of x. We have been told that the sine inverse of x here is a. So that gives us cos a times cos inverse of x is um, b, so we have sine b. So how do we simplify now from this step? From here, we see that um, sine alpha is equal to x and cos alpha is equal to x. Therefore, we know that sine alpha is equal to cos alpha. So sine alpha is equal to x equal to cos alpha. Here is cos, please. Um, here is cos, cos, 
so thank you so it therefore means equally that sine b should also be equal to cos a if sine a is equal to cos b then sine b should be equal to cos a so now here in the next step we have this so our x is the same as cos b so cos b times cos b plus um sine b times sine b because another cos a is the same as sine b so this gives us cos squared b plus sine squared b and from trigonometry this gives us one as required question four uh we have Given the function f defined as f of x equals that, express f of x in partial fractions. So as I've mentioned, please don't forget to visit our blog. On our blog, we have past questions for all the other subjects, and we equally have the preparation pages for advanced level. Equally, we have the maths award page. You can equally follow us on Facebook. It is very important where we leave a lot of messages. We equally have guidelines on university courses and scholarships to study abroad you can get all of that on the gce math panel web page please don't forget to visit it and don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends especially those who may be in the suburbs and are going through a lot of difficulty to access material so let's express this in partial fractions so this one is actually a simple one but looking at the denominator here we see we have a linear factor here and a quadratic factor x squared plus one so this quadratic factor is written as bx plus c on on that x squared plus one if this video is too fast please go to the bottom right of your youtube page um on your phone and reduce the speed to 0 0.75 if it is not clear go and adjust the resolution to maximum because you are economizing data so it might not be good so adjust the resolution to maximum and you will get it exactly as clear as it's supposed to be so here when we multiply all through by x minus 1, x squared plus 1, we will have x plus 1 to be identical to a into x plus 1 plus bx plus c into x minus 1. And when x is equal to 1, this one will reduce to 0, and we'll be left with 1 plus 1. So we'll be left 1 plus 1 is equal to 2a to be equal to 2, and a will be equal to 1 by comparing variables. Then we now expand since we already know that a is equal to one we can now expand so that we can get the values of b and c by comparing variables so when we expand we'll have x squared plus one plus bx squared plus cx minus bx minus c and when we compare the coefficients we will have b to be equal to minus one and c to be equal to zero therefore f of x can be expressed as being identical to one over x minus one minus x over x squared plus one. Find the integral of f of x dx. Hence, I would like to uh, emphasize on the hence here. Hence means you must continue with this previous work that you have done. That's the meaning of hence. If they said hence or otherwise, it means you have a choice. But hence means you must continue, don't make a mistake. So to integrate this, um, looking at the denominator here, when you differentiate x minus 1, you have 1. When you differentiate x squared, you have 2x. So we can use lean for these subparts. So this one, you give us lean. Absolute value must be there because lean is not defi defined when the function or this core value is negative. So the absolute value must be there. It's very important. Minus, when you differentiate x squared plus 1, gives you 2x. So to adjust or modify or balance, you have to multiply a half lean x squared plus one plus the constant k, where k is an element of r. And from logarithms, you can simplify this as lean x minus one, all that on the square root of x squared minus one. Now find the integral of x plus two times e to the power three x dx. So with this one, we can separate into two. Okay, before this we have by using the substitution sign u is equal to sign x, find that integral. So using this substitution, if u is equal to sign x, then du will be equal to cos x dx. So my du is equal to cos x dx, and I can see this as 
cos x dx is the numerator here. So I'll just replace this cos x dx by du. As you can see here, it's supposed to be dx at this point. I've not put. And all that over, since u is equal to sine x, then sine squared x will be equal to u squared, 1 plus u squared. And when you look at this integral from formula, you know that it's tan inverse of u. This is 1 over 1 plus x squared. The integral of that is tan inverse or arc tan u plus k. Now, this now gives us arc tan. But now, u is equal to sine x. So, you have arc tan sine x plus k prime now because um, I've changed from the variable u to x. Now, k prime, where k prime is an element of r. Now, find that integral. So, um, to actually get this uh, integral, to get this integral, to get this integral, we can break this um, into two parts, a and b, x e to the power 3x plus 2 e to the power 3x. So, for a, we have x e to the power 3x. We can say that let our u be equal to this x. Let our u be equal to this x. And our du be equal to dx. And let our v be equal to e to the power 3x. And our dv is to e to the power 3x. And v will be equal to 1 third e to the power 3x. Therefore, a will be equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So that will give us 1 third x e to the power 3x minus the integral of one third e to the power three x dx. And this is what we obtain. For b, integrating b, we obtain two over three e to the power three x plus c. So we have the constant k and the constant c, which we merge to form the new constant m here, where m is an element of r. So the total integral for this is one third x e to the power three x plus five or nine e to the power three x plus m where M is an element of R. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. And don't forget to subscribe and to watch the next scripts for questions five and six. Bye-bye.